morning, Journey Church. Would you stand and worship the Lord with us this morning? Come on. church to worship the Lord this morning. Look around, find someone you've never met, and tell them, hey. Well, good morning. Thank you again for joining us here, and we're excited to see what the Lord's going to do this morning. 
And it's so, such an incredible moment to come and lift our, our words, our worship, our time, our efforts to the Lord this morning. But I want to tell you something. If you're in here this morning and you haven't given your life to Christ, you might try to figure out what's going on. You might wonder, why are these people lifting their hands and jumping around on stage and passing out coffee and telling me, hey, what's this about? And I want to tell you this morning that you are loved, that you are cherished by God so much that he sent his only son to die for you, that you could have everlasting life, not just life, but a relationship with Jesus on this life, for the struggles that you face every day, that there is hope for the the doubt that you have, there is reassurance for the a void that is, is empty. There's something to fill that, and that's the Holy Spirit. And he wants to do that for you today. And I want to tell you that even as a believer, so many times we, we fight to care for control of our life. We fight to not surrender. But I want to tell you the most beautiful thing that the gospel lets us do is say, God, I am nothing without you. I can't hold my life together, but you can. And when we do that, we say, God, here is my heart. Here is my life. And then your life begins to make sense. You see the purpose in the struggles. You see the light in the midst of the darkness. And I want to tell you, Jesus wants to be that for you this morning. No matter if you're a believer or even a non-believer this morning, we need to open up our heart and say, God, here is my heart. Here is my life. Have it all as we surrender it to him this morning. Come on, church. We sing this out together.
there's something vulnerable when, when you say, here's my heart. When you're in a relationship with someone and, and, and you proceed with marriage and you, you give them your heart and you join together as one, it's a vulnerable thing to, to give your heart to someone. Because, you know, that someone may break your heart. That, that someone may leave you. That someone may uh, abandon you. But there's one thing true with, with God. He will never leave you. He'll never abandon you. He'll never forsake you. And, and so when we say, God, here's my heart, we don't have to worry about the future and our heart being broken. God will always be there, and God will never break our heart. But there's something else I know about being vulnerable and saying, God, here's my heart. And, and those other words that we're singing along with it, speak what is true. We know that his word is true and God will always speak true. And sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes we don't want to know the truth. You know, as kids, we're, you're like, I, I, I want to continue to do what I'm doing. Don't, don't tell me that. Let me do my own thing. Sometimes we play that with God. We say, God, I don't I, just let me do what I, I want to do. But when the truth, when, when God speaks truth into our lives, sometimes it's for correction. Sometimes it's to readjust us and see things that we're doing wrong. But, but when we surrender in that and we say, God, speak what is true. Here's what I know. There's freedom in truth. You can walk in freedom when you walk in a relationship with someone in truth. Nothing to hide. Can I tell you this morning, there's nothing you can hide from God. He knows it all already. And there's freedom in that. He know, He loves you in spite of your junk. Hey, look to the person beside you and say, God loves you in spite of your junk. Go ahead, tell them. Hey. Despite of your secrets that no one else may know, your struggles that no one else may have a clue, not even your spouse, your past, your hurts, your failures, God still loves you, and he wants to speak truth into our life this morning, so with every head bowed and every eye closed for just a moment, the worship team's going to sing over us, and as they sing over us, let's make a declaration this morning that we would open our hearts to God's word, that we would open our hearts to the message, that we would open our hearts to the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. And in and, and, and an act of surrender this morning, as we sing those words, here's my heart, speak what is true. May that be a sign of surrender if you would like. And, and just saying, Lord, speak what's true this morning in my life. I need truth. I need truth in my life. With every head bowed and eyes closed, just for a moment, just to ask God to give you truth this morning and hope. And if you feel led, you can raise your hand in an act of surrender this morning, just saying, God, I need you. Lord, may we surrender everything. 
May you speak truth into our life. Lord, would you bless this offering and use it for your glory to advance the kingdom of God as we continue to reach people that are far from you. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you for this church. Thank you, Father, for the people that you've placed here to be a part of this church body and for what you're doing in this community. As we continue to worship in our giving, would you bless it? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, Journey, if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn to Psalm 143. If you can follow along with us in your Bible or maybe on your iPhone, on the Bible app or some other device that you have to be able to follow along with us. Uh, we'll be in Psalm 143. This one, I want to welcome you and thank you for being here uh, as we start the month of June. Uh, a lot of exciting things going on in our church. We'll be sharing uh, this morning as well as next week. And a lot of different things are going on. I want to keep you posted on all of that. I want to say welcome to those that are watching online. Uh, as well as our Valdosta campus. Thank you guys for joining us this morning. Can we give our Valdosta campus a hand and uh, let them know that we're praying for them uh, down in Valdosta as they reach that community with the gospel uh, as well as we reach uh, Tifton. Um, this morning we are uh, going to talk about something very specific, I think, that God has for us this morning. And a lot of times in our, our series that we'll plan out, you know, we'll look at things that we feel like God's leading us in as a church and things that, that, that may speak to us and challenge us in our faith and where God may be leading us. And this morning, I think, is a very specific word that, that many people in this room this morning need to hear. And I believe that. I believe that's why God pressed it upon my heart to speak on this, um, that some people need to hear it, as well as our Valdosta campus and those that are online. God has a word for you this morning, and here's the word. And then I want you to look around and tell three people the word. It's actually three words. Don't give up. Go ahead. Tell three people. Go ahead. Tell them. Three people. Don't give up. If there's anything that, that, that we need to hear as we go on this journey in life is for people to come alongside us and say, don't give up. Um, don't quit. I remember as a kid when I went from flag football to tackle football, my papa signed me up and I remember my first practice and I just happened to get the coach that in rec ball, he was like the king of rec football and he was gonna win the championship every year and I mean, he was just gonna like beat you down until like he could make you into the winning team and I remember I was already terrified that I was on his team and then second of all, after the first practice, he ran us so much that I went home and I was ready. I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, we're kids. He's going to kill us and he's going to be responsible for killing kids. Like, this is not normal. And he ran us and ran us. And I remember telling my papa, like, I don't know if I can do this. And he said, boy, you signed up for it. I paid for it. You're going to do it. And you're not quitting until the end. Now, you can make a decision at the end of the year, but you're playing this whole year. 
And I'm so thankful he instilled that in me. Uh, But what I have found is this. It's not the smartest people in life who who make it. it. It's not the most talented people who make the biggest impact. It's not. It's not the richest people. It's not the most popular people. It's the people who've learned this simple truth. Don't give up. Those are the people who make it. Scripture talks about enduring to the end, perseverance, making it. Don't don't give up. And there's three things that you don't give up on as a Christ follower. I want to give those to you, and then I'll address them in the message One is, you don't give up on people. Maybe some of you are in the the process of giving up on somebody. Maybe you're praying for them, and you're ready to give up. Don't give up on people. The minute you give up, they might surprise you. Don't give up. Number two is, not only with people, don't give up on prayer. Don't give up on prayer. I know from the way I'm wired, if I don't see results, then I want to change something. And, and, you know, and with prayer, it may be, and many times it is, is we pray and we pray and we don't see the results. And I know for me, it's, I'm very tempted to stop praying for it or to move on to something different and, and not continue in praying for that because I don't see the results that I'm looking for. And, and for many of us, God's doing much more than your, in your prayer life than you can possibly imagine, but you don't see the results that you're looking for or God's not answering the prayer in the way that you want it answered. And, and so we get to a place where we're ready to, to give up because he doesn't answer it as quickly as we want or the way that we want or what we would expect. And we... we are tempted to give up, not only on people, not only on prayer, but on God's promise, uh, on God's word. We're not to give up on God's dream for our life. As a Christ follower, God's instilled dreams in us and visions, and he's wired all of us in here. And when you accept Christ as your Savior, you begin to see this plan that he has laid out, and you begin to follow him when you surrender your life to him and he has dreams for your life and and that he's wired you for and and I'm not talking about selfish dreams because we have those too we we all have selfish dreams that are based on our pride and our own ability and those things aren't going to happen and and if they do happen they just mess you up and they mess other people up along the way too but The dreams I'm talking about this morning are the ones that are based on the promise of God and His Word and His truth. And many times when they don't happen the way that we thought they should or maybe it's been years since you've heard that promise or you believe that was a promise God had given you, that dream that God had given you and you've given up on it. And I'm here to tell you this morning not to. And if you have, it's time to get back in the game. And not to give up. Um, You don't give up on people. You don't give up on prayer. And you don't give up on promises. You know, and and, and to, to, to continue through whatever it may be, if you think not giving up means that you have to be perfect, then you're wrong. If you think that, you know, not giving up means that you've got it all together, then you're wrong. Because every one of us in this room is going to make mistakes along the way. And the difference is when we make the state, mistakes that we realize it and we don't give up and we continue to press on. When we fail, we get up and we continue to press on. It doesn't mean that you're perfect or that you have it all together. It simply means that you don't give up even when you feel like it. And it's easy for you to hear that. It's easy for you to hear that from the preacher to say, hey, don't give up. Just hang on a little bit longer. It's easy to hear that. It's another thing to live it. This past week, we went to uh, Panama for uh, two days, went down there just for a couple of days, and we went to this place that was this museum, had all these hands-on things that you could do, and we walked up to this, this part of the, uh, in this room where... They had these two bicycles that were two-seater bicycles. You would sit in it, 
and then they'd strap you in and as you start to pedal it would accelerate and it would do this flip and it would just flip over and over and over and over and so my wife from the outside being the cheerleader is like you can do that you, come, you need to show the boys you know how to you, you, you're brave enough to get on that arm I mean she's just enticing me and I'm like I'm like, yeah, I, you know what, I can, I can do that. So I remember this week I got, I got on the ride, she strapped, the lady strapped me and she said, now if you start to get sick, simply yell pineapple. That's the key word. Just yell pineapple and I'll stop it and you can get off and throw up. And I said, oh boy, like this is the real deal. Like you're telling me people apparently throw up on this thing. And so I'm, I'm in the front, you know, I always want to be brave, so I sat in the front seat. We start pedaling, and man, I'm telling you, that thing starts spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning faster and faster, and I'm about to lose it. Like, I'm about to throw up, but every time I'd come around, I could, just for a glimpse, I'd see my boy sitting there going, go daddy, and I'm like, I can't quit, I can't quit, I can't quit, you know, I've got to be a man. And I wanted to quit so bad. And I thought, if I can just focus on something, if I can just zoom in on something, I'll be okay. But there was no focus. And like, it's just, boom, oh, oh. so I quit pedaling thinking it's going to slow down. No, I didn't slow down. It just kept going. I think the pedaling's just a lie. Like, it don't matter. You're going to spin whether you pedal or not. And, and so it keeps going and keeps going. And finally it stops. I get off. And like an hour and a half later, I get my equilibrium back. And I'm okay to continue to enjoy our, our tour of, of the place. And my wife just laughed at me the whole time uh, about that because I just felt sick. But, but I think as I was preparing this message, I think that's how we are in life a lot of times. We start spiraling down. And it's hard to focus on anything because your life is just spinning. And, and it's hard to zoom in on one thing. And I, I, as I was flipping around I thought I'm just going to close my eyes because I could not focus on anything so I just closed my eyes and just hung on and said Lord you got to get me through this I don't want to puke I, I, I got to make it through it and, but it's the same way in life we just start spinning and we just have to say God I've got to focus so I've got I got to get it together and, and it's easy to hear people say you need to get your act together it's another thing when you're walking through the storm to, to get your act together and, and so how do you how do you do that when you feel like giving up? Well, David shares in Psalm 143 a passage where David felt like giving up. David was struggling. And I think we can learn from this passage a few things to apply to our lives in regards to not giving up but, but hanging in there um, when things get difficult. Psalm 143, 143, verses 4 through 10. Let's look at it together. It says, So my spirit grows faint within me. My heart within me is dismayed. I remember the days of long ago, and I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you, and I thirst for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I will be like those who go down to the pit. Let the morning bring me your word of your unfailing love for I have put my trust in you show me the way I should go for to you I entrust my life rescue me from my enemies Lord for I hide myself in you teach me to do your will for you are my God may your good spirit lead me on level ground and so we see David in a moment of in his flesh, he's feeling like giving up. He's in despair. He's, he's, he's struggling. And, and I think through this text in Psalm 143, there's four things that we can identify with in, this, in these verses that will help us not to give up along the journey in life. And I want to give those to you this morning as we talk about not giving up. Number one is this. Spend time talking to God. You need to spend time talking to God now some of you say well may that that Benji that sounds simple that's you know what are you talking about spend time talking with God what we would call prayer taking time spending time in prayer and communicating with him sometimes in life you're going to feel like giving up it's part of human nature in our flesh when things get difficult and we struggle with it. You may be in a relationship that's very difficult right now. You may be in a job that's very difficult right now. You may be in a situation financially that's very difficult right now. Whatever it may be, I'm here to tell you this morning to not give up. Don't give up and to hang in there and spend time talking 
with God. Take time to spend with him. In 143 verse 4, look with me on the screen. It says, so, this is David. He says, so my spirit grows faint within me. My heart is dismayed. My heart within me is dismayed. In other words, his heart is broken. His heart is devastated. He's in distress. He's struggling. In other words, he's ready to give up in his flesh. He's hurting. David was a man after God's own heart, according to Scripture. But one of the reasons he was unafraid, he was a man after God's own heart because he was unafraid to tell God how he felt. He was willing to share his feelings with God. Lamentations chapter 2, there's a verse that says we should, that we should pour our heart out like water in the presence of the Lord. Now, to share with you this morning, with, with me personally, one of the things I struggle with is many times I struggle with sharing my feelings. In fact, if I get upset or if, if I get angry or if I get mad, instead of sharing my feelings and being open about it in my flesh, I have a tendency to want to shut down, not talk, walk away. And that's the very opposite of what God says we should do. God says we should be open and, and talk. There's something about communication. There's something about communication in a relationship with your spouse that you, you, you communicate, you share your feelings and, and, and not keep that closed because when you keep it closed, it just builds up. And it can bring a lot of destruction and anger and hatred and resentment and other things. You have to be willing to share your heart with God and pour out your heart like water, Lamentation says. You pour out your feelings. It Bible says that we 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 share that with him. We 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 speak to him and it starts with us having that prayer time to communicate with him. And this is a simple lesson from David's life that we can learn to, to help us during our times of struggle. Psalm uh, chapter thirty in verse 18 the scripture says uh, the Lord is close to the broken hearted and saves those who are crushed in the spirit and so maybe some of you this morning are broken hearted maybe your heart was broke this week or maybe last month or, or this year or whatever it may be and you have been on the edge of, of giving up and quitting whatever it may be and, and running the opposite way but the scripture says that the Lord is close to the broken hearted and saves those who are, cr are crushed in the spirit and so in other words he's close to you and he's waiting on you to simply respond to him and to speak to him and, and to share your feelings with him and to communicate with him that's how salvation happens right salvation comes in a place when we're convicted of our sin the Holy Spirit's working on our heart we know that we're wrong we know that we're sinners we know that we need a savior and we simply confess to him and say God I surrender my life to you I'm a sinner in need of a savior and father I'm, I'm handing my life over to you I'm repenting I believe in who you are and what you've done and I'm giving my life to you it's communicating with God in an act of surrender and for many of us will communicate in the beginning in, in, in that way but then we, we, as we get into the relationship with him we start to shut down and we hold it and God says I want you to communicate communicate with me tell me how you feel the Lord is close to the broken hearted and so when you're ready to give up you need to talk to God number two not only you need to talk to God but number two is this remember who God is and what he has done before you give up remember who God is and what he has done David does this in verse 5 he says I remember the days of long ago and I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done can you imagine David in this prayer time and confessing this and saying, God, I remember when you were with me when I was facing Goliath. And I remember what your hands have done. I remember how you were with me in that battle. I remember how you were with me when I was protecting the flock. I remember how you were with me when, when these things happened. And I'll, I remember the works of your hands and what you've done. 
before you give up, you need to remember what God has done. And, and so you focus on what he's done and who he is. And, and when you're ready to give up, what you really need to do is you need to look up. And see God for who he is. Why? Because God is bigger. God's bigger than your problems. God's bigger than your feelings. God's bigger than anyone. God's bigger than your enemy. Uh, God is bigger than anything else that you may face. Um, in fact, look to the person beside you. About Austin campus, you do the same. Look to somebody beside you and say, God is bigger. Go ahead, tell them, God is bigger. And here's the cool thing about God as God's bigger. But we know this, God is, is bigger and, and he never gets any smaller. God will never get smaller. God is always bigger and God never changes. And so if God never changes and, and God is bigger and God never gets smaller, then how come many times in our life when we see God, in one moment, we can see him in the highlight reel, and he's bigger than everything, and he's seeing us through it. But then the next moment, he's this small, and we don't see that how, he can, how he can work in any of this situation in our life. If God's bigger, he never changes, and he never gets smaller, then how come our perspective changes and we see him smaller? And, and here's what I think happens. I, I think like when I was on that ride and was spinning around, and I... I I couldn't, I couldn't focus on anything. I couldn't get a clear picture because I was just spiraling down. And I think what happens in our life is when we're spiraling down, we lose sight of who God is and what he's done because we can't, we can't focus in. And all we see is the spiraling that's happened and the falling that's happened. And, and we get to a place of desperation and we're ready to give up. And we're ready to quit. And we need, before we quit, you need to remember who he is and what he's done in your life. I think of many times how God has walked through many valleys with me. And any time I get ready to quit on something, just to look back and see how he's provided in the past and how he'll provide in the future. And, and it helps you to continue to press on. Number three is this, not only... Do we communicate with God and then we remember who he is and what he's done? But number three is you need to be willing to ask God to guide you to take the next step. Look at verse eight with me. David says, let the morning bring me the word, bring me word of your unfailing love. For I have put my trust in you. Show me the way that I should go. For to you I and trust my life and so you ask God for the next step along the way and and God directs our path here we he says show me the way that I should go notice David doesn't say show me the entire plan he says just show me the way that I need to go give me direction for my life that I can take the next step not give me the whole plan and then I'll take the next step because many of us that's what we want we say God show me the plan for my entire life then I will start taking the steps that are necessary to get there but God says no it doesn't work that way I'll give you the next step you take that next step and it will direct you to the plans that I have for your life and you say well why doesn't God just reveal everything to me so I can see the whole picture and it be more clearly I can have more confidence but that's the problem what what I believe and I know for me personally is this is if God sat down and said Benji here's the plan for your entire life here it is here's what I want you to do it's, it's everything It's laid out right here in that moment, if God was to do that, here's what I believe would happen with, with my life. My focus would be taken off God completely, and it would be placed on myself. And I would no longer need a dependence upon Him, because I would begin to trust in myself. Or I would say, God, I can't do this. God, I, I'm not equipped to do this. I'm not going to take that next step. How many times has God brought you through something? If you would have known that you were going to have to go through that valley, you may have said on the front end, I, I, won't, I won't walk through that valley to get there because it's too difficult. And so God doesn't show the whole plan because many of us wouldn't take the steps needed because we would be afraid. And so God gives us one step at a time and he, and he gives us direction along the way. And we need to ask God to guide us. Even David here saying would you show me the way the man after God's own heart show me the way 
and, and I will entrust my life to you. In other words, I will take the necessary steps because I'm trusting you completely. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7, there's a, there's a passage there that says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. There's an interesting thing about that passage of Scripture that Jesus uses there. It doesn't mean just to ask once, to seek once, to find just once. But I think he calls us to continue to ask, to ask for guidance, to continue to seek after him, to continue to knock, continue to find. Hey, look to somebody beside you and say, you got to keep knocking. Go ahead, tell them. Maybe you've only knocked once and you got to keep knocking. You, you got to keep seeking. You, you got to keep finding. Maybe some of you have given up on knocking because you haven't seen the results, but you don't know what's on the horizon that God's about to do. And how many times do we miss out on the blessings on the horizon because we give up a day too short? We, we give up because we're tired. Satan comes in and wants to destroy that blessing from us, and we miss out on it completely because we give up. We, we need to ask for guidance. And then we entrust our, our lives to Him to follow Him along the way, knowing that He'll be with us. And my last one is this. When you ask for the steps, once you get that direction, you trust God for the strength, but then you've got to act on it. There's an old hymn, there's a song called Trust and Obey. And you need to trust and obey. I have to trust and obey. It's one thing, it's one thing to ask for guidance and get it, but it's another thing to act on it. Right? You you go to someone for advice or counseling and they they try to help you and they give you the steps you need to take, but then you walk away and you still try to do it your own. Many of us that's how we the way we treat God. God, show me the steps. God, show me the way. And the path starts to open up. And then we want to take the step on our own. And, and the problem with that is this, is when God gives you the strength to take the step, it's going to require a God-sized faith in order to take the God-sized step that you need to take in order to see the God-sized plan that, that he has for your life. And there's no way that you can generate enough power on your own to be able to do that, it requires us walking in faith that only comes from God, that, that He gives us. In Psalm chapter 143, verse 10, this is the last verse in this passage, we trust and obey. And here's what he says. He says, teach me to do your will. This is David now. David, he says, teach me to do your will. In other words, in my flesh, I struggle with this. Lord, would you teach me to do your will? For you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. What does it mean to be led on level ground? It means to be stable. Now, I can tell you this morning, this week, when I was flipping upside down, I was ready to get somewhere stable and just chill for a minute. Like, get back to land and go, okay. This is land, this is stability, now let me get everything back together. And maybe that's what some of you need to do this morning. You're seeking st stability because you're spiraling. And, and David says, I'm spiraling my life, I, I'm, my heart's broken, I'm dismayed, I'm, I'm faint, I'm weary. And he says, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. In other words, would you give me stability in my time of desperation? And I believe there's people here this morning that need to hear that. There's people in our Valdosta campus, you need to hear that this morning. You need stability. You need something stable. And that stability comes from Christ. You trust and then you obey. The apostle Paul felt like giving up many times. In scripture, he often would write about it, and he was one of the greatest Christians who ever lived. I mean, you, you look at his writings in the New Testament, and it's encouraging words, and, and the faith, and, and how we're to, to live, and, and I think he discovered the answer to this question, 
why does God put me through this circumstance? Why does God allow this to happen in my life? Why isn't God answering my prayer right this moment? Why is not it happening the way that I want it to happen? And you start giving up on people and you start giving up on your prayers and you start giving up on the promises of, of God. And I think the Apostle Paul, I think he identified with it here. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9, look with me here. He says, indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. Can you imagine making that statement like I really feel like my life has received the sentence of death maybe your spouse walks out on you maybe you had a tough week with your job whatever it may be and you evaluate and you say my life has been sentenced to death like it is just it's tough and it's difficult but then Paul goes on in this verse but this happened, in other words, the circumstances you're in right now, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on who? But on God. He says, there's these things that happen, and I'm ready to give up in my flesh, but then I realize they need to happen so that I won't rely on myself, but I'll rely on a higher power that I'll rely on God who raises the dead. So in other words, Paul says one of the reasons that God allows these situations in our life is so that we will trust and obey and we will walk in His power and in His might and in His way and that His power is far beyond any power that we could generate ourselves as we walk and we trust Him and, and we believe and, and we allow Him to lead us. He's the one, Paul says, who raises the dead. He, he's the God who can raise your dead hope this morning. Morning. He's the God who can raise your dead dreams this morning. He's the God who can raise your dead marriage this morning. He's the God who can raise your dead family this morning. Your, your kids, those that are far from him, whatever it may be, he's the God that has the power to raise the dead. And that's why we put our hope and trust in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 says, We are hard pressed on every side but not crushed, we're perplexed, but not in despair. In other words, we may feel crushed and we may feel like everything's falling apart, but God's with us. Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good. For the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Psalm 31, verse 24 says, be strong and take heart all who hope in the Lord. Hey, look to somebody beside you and say, you need to be strong and take heart. Go ahead. Be strong and, and take heart and, and not give up. Listen, not giving up on the, the promises of God, not giving up on prayer, not giving up on people. For God has placed the mission here at Journey Church to reach people far from God, to embrace the journey, to live for God, to love people and serve the world in our community and in our Valdosta campus and those that are watching online. And I'm excited to tell you this morning that when God promises something, that it will come true. When God gives us his word, it will come true. Now, it may not happen the way that you want it to happen or the way that I want it to happen, but when we trust in him, we can believe and follow him and know that he'll see it through. In Daniel chapter 9 and in verse 4, Daniel, there's a prayer here that Daniel's praying. He says, I pray to the Lord my God and I confess, Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keeps his commandments. Let me tell you something about this prayer David was pray or Daniel was praying in this moment as he was praying a prayer about how God is always fulfilling his promises. As he said he would. And Daniel was waiting for it for 70 years. And during 70 years of waiting, that's Daniel's prayer. He's great and awesome and he keeps his covenant of love. And God's keeping that covenant of love with us and his promise will always ring true and we must hang on and not give up because in due time, he will see us through it and just on the horizon, it may be the fact that it's about to take place and you're ready to give up. And that's where, as a church, where God is leading us, we can stand true on his promise. Who would have thought a church in five years is, that God has done so many things in this community and how God continues to work and and uh, in, in through our church and we're about to have a permanent home out 125 and, and if you have a pen everybody's been asking this question we did a whole series on this thing called are we there yet well I want to give you a date a date is August the 16th 
that is our first scheduled Sunday for the new building to actually have worship in there and we will no longer be in this building. Uh, we met this past week and met with the builder and it looks like in July it'll be completed but we felt like um, that we couldn't get the certain date down because there was a couple of things that needed to happen and we felt like with it being the holidays and it being the end of the summer we wanted to capitalize on moving in the week that school starts back. So August the 16th, school starts back. Journey Church is going to be at the new location launching uh, our first ever service in our new building. So when you leave here today, you need to communicate that with the community and social networking. But we'll begin to promote it in many ways. But church, uh, let me tell you something. God's promise rings true. It may have taken two or three years. With Daniel, it took 70. But along the way, you may feel like giving up. You may feel like quitting. And if you can see the whole picture on the front end, you may say, I don't even want to take that path. But God requires us to take that path in order to trust him completely along the way and we have something to celebrate this morning God has provided that promise and he's fulfilled it and we're in the process of relocating August the 16th so we need to give God a hand and a shout and a clap of praise because that's been a long time coming a long time coming and now it's almost time just a few more weeks hang in there hey look to the person beside you say hang in there it's almost time don't give up on God's promises hey number two don't give up on prayer just a couple of weeks ago, a lady stopped me outside right here, and, and she wanted to tell a, her testimony or share a story with me, and she said um, she'd been praying for her family to, to go to church, and they don't, they don't live here in Tifton, and uh, she called her mom up, and I believe it was Mother's Day when, when, this, when this started, she called her mom up and said, will you go to church with me this morning, and um, said that that her mom was like, how are we going to do that? And she said, well, go to the internet, go to embracethejourney.tv. I'm going to stay home, and we're going to watch church together this morning. We're going to go to church together, even though we're in two different places. And so they did that. They, they went to church together online. Um, the next Sunday, she was coming here to, to, to church, and her mom called her on her way here and said, hey, I just want to let you know I'm going to church with you this morning, and I'm going to be watching online. And the stories that I hear like that all the time of how God is answering prayers, don't give up. And it may not be the way that you want it. It may not happen the way you think it should happen, but don't give up. And then we don't give up on people. That's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. I look across this room at all the people that God's changed your life. And I look at my own life and ask, well, you know, what if people would have given up on me? What if, you know, what, what if people wouldn't have continued to pour into me even though I was running or not listening? You don't give up. You hang in there. In due time, God will see you through it. With every head bowed and every eye closed. So much to celebrate this morning. So much exciting things that are happening relocating to a, another facility God's promises coming true taking time but, but, but in his time in his perfect time it happens prayers that are being answered in different ways some of you have quit praying and maybe God's speaking to you this morning say it's time to start back praying for those things it's time to start communicating with me and don't give up on people Yes, they're going to hurt you. Yes, they may abandon you. Yes, they, they may run. But listen, you never know what God may do or what he's up to. Don't give up on people. That's why we do what we do as a church because we don't give up on people. We're, we're called to reach people who are far from him. Maybe people who others have given up on. With every head bowed in here this morning, maybe that's where you are and you need salvation. More exciting than a building being built, more exciting than August the 16th when we worship in that building for the first time together, more exciting than all of that is the fact that God loves you enough and that God wants to embrace you and, and have a relationship with you and he wants to save you this morning. More exciting than any of those other things is the fact that God loves you and he extends his hand to you for salvation. 
if you will just surrender your life to him. And that's more exciting and more powerful than anything else. And maybe as you start this journey, it starts with you communicating to God and surrendering your life to him. Sharing your heart. Remembering who he is and what he's done for you. Maybe it's right here in this moment. And then asking for guidance and then trusting and obeying and that you'll make the decision, that you'll decide to follow Jesus this morning. If that's you, with no one looking around and you would say, Pastor Benji, I need to surrender my life to Jesus. I need to follow him this morning. I'm confessing him as Lord. Hands are already going up. Thank you for raising your hands. Thank you for raising your hands. Any others that would say, I need to surrender my life to Jesus this morning. Thank you for raising your hand in the back. I see it. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to miss you. Father, would, would we as a body of believers live a life of endurance and perseverance and that we would follow you every step of the way. God, that we would not give up. We would not grow weary. We would not get tired. But Lord, when we do, Lord, we, that we would trust in you and walk in you and take those steps of faith in you and that you would see us through. May we not give up on your promises. May we not give up on prayer. And we may we not give up on people. Because God, you have not given up on us and we thank you for that as we continue to worship would we follow you father everywhere you send us
cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back three important words today don't give up on the count of three let's repeat those words together one two three don't give up don't give up what an encouraging message today thank you so much pastor benji Allowing God to use you to speak into our lives. And you know what? God will use those three important words that you and I can take into our everyday world and encourage someone else. Because, see, other people need to hear those encouraging words. God will use you and me this week to speak into the lives of other individuals that need to be encouraged in God. To continue on in this life. To continue their marriage, to continue with their family, to continue at work, to continue doing what God would have them to do. Encouraging words, don't give up. I want to encourage you here today. Many of you already have checked in on social media and you've gone to your Instagram account and have posted a photograph or you've gone to Twitter and you have tweeted some phrase or some verse of scripture that has been used in the message today. Or you've checked in on Facebook right here at Journey Church. I want to encourage you, if you haven't done that, take just a few moments before you leave. Grab somebody and do a face and a selfie and smile that others can see what God's doing here at Journey Church. Let others know that God's in the process of doing great and even greater things here at Journey. Listen, even greater, like Pastor Benji shared, even greater than a building. Amen. And let me tell you what, you don't want to miss next Sunday because more exciting news is going to be shared that's going to dramatically affect the life of Journey Church. doesn't have anything to do with the building out 125 North. By the way, we all do know we celebrated what God has done and we've seen God do miracle after miracle concerning this building process. Even though it's been a two or a three year journey, let me tell you what, folks, we've seen God do so many miracles. A miracle defined it is this. A miracle is something that only God can do. A miracle is not what you and I can do, but it's only what God can do. And we've seen God do many miracles related to this building process, and it's all in God's timing. It's not about my timing or your timing. You know, it's human nature to be critical of other people, critical of other churches. And there's some critical things that have been said in the past. You know, and you possibly have heard some of those things. But listen, my friend, it's like this. A building is simply a tool, a tool to better enable us to reach people that are far from God and encourage them to embrace a journey to live for God, love people, and serve the world as Jesus would have us to serve the world. So I want to encourage you to look up, be faithful, be true unto the Lord, be encouraging, encourage other people, don't give up, speak positive words, encouraging words into other people's lives, speak the truth in love, and let Jesus receive the honor and the glory for all those things. And by the way, thank you so much for being with us today in worship at Journey Church. A number of you made a decision for Christ. In your seat, you'll find a connection card. If you'll pick up that connection card and indicate it that today that you have trusted Jesus as a forgiver of your life's sins, we want to rejoice with you. In the back, there's a connections table. Pastor Burke Crow, our discipleship pastor, is back there. Has some free information he'd like to give you. As you leave, if you'll drop your connection card in the basket on the right side of the door, um, we'll have a record of your decision and your attendance today if you're a first or a second time guest. And by the way, I know the summertime is normally a time that we all enjoy vacation. Some of you probably won't be here next Sunday. I won't be. I'll be out of the country next Sunday. But Lord, 
willing, if I'm able, I'm going to try to worship with Journey Church online. Go to embracetheJourney.tv and you can enjoy our online worship experience at 9.30 and 11 o'clock. And you can worship right along with the saints here at Journey and our friends as we lift up the Lord God. So uh, access embracetheJourney.tv and um, encourage others to do the same thing and worship with us online. You also can take the opportunity to worship through giving. Click on the giving tab at that website. You'll be able to participate in worship and give the gifts of your tithes and your offerings. So go out, be encouraged. Remember to check in on social media before you leave. Be an encouragement this week to other people and allow God to use you in a constructive and in a positive way that others may be able to know, hey, something going on in that individual's life. Something is going on great at Journey Church, Tipton, Mount Austin. You don't want to miss next Sunday because of the exciting news that's going to be shared right here from this stage by Pastor Pinky. God bless you. We love you. Go out and don't give up.